All right, so step one, disconnect the battery. Battery's already out. The uh, ground, negative, whatever was connected to the frame, took that out. Um, the little fuse bar thingy is right here. I had to take it off because these little bolts were holding it on and they were about to pull through this plastic, this plastic hole right here. So I'm gonna have to put some washers. Anyway, the battery was connected to this one as well as this. So um, first up, I was just looking to see what kind of condition these, this, these optifuses were in. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in this location. Eventually I might move it. But the wiring on these things is kind of a mess. So anyway, that's gonna happen I'm a little bit later. Come on, these little screws. Next step is I removed the power on off switch thingy that was right here. It turns the power off to most of the coach, but not the exterior things. I'm gonna reuse that over there yeah right over there so i'm gonna leave this here because i'm gonna come down through this hole later the from the battery it's going to come down here one of these two goes to the control panel thing inside that powers the power supply thingamajob that distributes power to the rest of the rv so stage one is complete we are plugged in. Basically stage one was just to put all the components in place and get the battery working without the, so the inverter is not hooked up as well as the charge controller. Uh, those are the next couple of steps at stage two and three. Stage one was just getting the camper back working again, which I have done. So basically back up a little bit. So what I've done, took a two foot by four foot sheet of three quarter inch plywood, cut it down to fit up here. I think it's like 20 inches and three eighths or something. Um, mounted it above screws, top bottom. Inverter is mounted on another little block here. Um, Cause I just wanted to put it off the floor so I could pass some things through here if I needed extra space. So let me show you how everything is connected. Stage one basically is just wiring up the positive and negative bus bars. Here's the negative that goes to the original battery location. Here's the positive that goes to the original battery location. I'll show you that, that's those wires going like that. I'll show you that in a minute. So let's go through the negative battery circuit from the battery straight to the shunt. So the positive has a little cable thing for the battery monitor, the Victron. That's what the shunt's for. And it connects to the positive side of the battery. Anyway, from the shunt, it goes basically straight to the distribution block. One of these will go to the inverter. One will go to the charge controller. That's the next step. Um, the ground, I have the ground um, basically coming down under the inverter. Comes around here. I have it protected. It goes down into here. These are the switches for the stabilizers. There was a piece of wood here, but I wanted the extra space. So I took that out and um, I'm going to make a wooden platform so I can set some tools on here. Anyway, it goes down. Negative battery cable connects to the frame. Through this hole, I'm going to seal this up. I'm going to connect and hold it here and just use the same nut that was on over here where the battery was. It was connected to the frame right there. Just use the same nut to 
put it into the frame. Okay, that's the negative side. Positive side is battery cable to the fuse. I have a 200 amp, I think it's an ANL fuse. Then it goes up to the switch. Then from the switch to the distribution, positive distribution. So the fuse has to be pretty close in the first thing from the battery. So let me show you what I've done on the other side. Okay, here's the positive and negative that goes to, well, the original battery connection, which goes to the, um, the DC the goes the DC distribution block as well as the AC distribution and all that stuff. I didn't mess with any of that yet. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted I I got it protected as it goes in here. So let me show you what looks like underneath. Okay, underneath where it comes from the up top side, I've got it protected all the way through. Okay, the red. This is a big, uh, I'll show you a picture. Um, it's a splice block thing that I got at Lowe's. Basically, these two cables, the two red, both went up here to the switch. One of these reds goes to over here, and the other one goes all the way through the frame back to the power center. I guess that's what it's called. Power center. So basically I just fuse those two together on the positive and oh yeah and the new cable so basically uh, power comes in from up there from the battery through this cable here six gauge goes through the frame right here and connects right here where the original battery original battery was connected right there this is the power for the solar charge controller um, well actually it goes from the solar charge controller to the battery don't need that anymore because I'm gonna have a new one over there so this is just hanging loose I'm gonna tape it up um, okay and the negative, where's the negative? The black. The negative comes in from the battery and then connects straight to this six gauge, which goes all the way to the power center. Um, this six gauge used to be plugged in to a bus bar strip inside this thing. I'll show you a photo of that. And I ran a new basically use this is the same splice aluminum splice block thing and I just connected a new cable 12 gauge that goes in through here and connects to that bus bar block this six gauge cable did come in straight in here and connect to it but the bus bar thing is not big enough for a six gauge wire so the original ground was not very good. At least the ground that went to the power uh, power center. Now it's much better connection. That's basically it for stage one. Alrighty folks, stage two is in progress and almost done. I turned off the switch. So there's no power going to anything. Uh, let's see. If you can see. So here's the inverter. I have the uh, the ground hooked up to the earth ground thing on the bus bar. The negative is connected. The positive goes right here. But so before I hook up the positive, these inverters have capacitors in them, and if I just connect it, it's going to go. It's going to spark. So I've got a this uh, 25 watt 30 ohm resistor so what I'm gonna do is hopefully this isn't gonna spark I guess we'll find out go 
going to put one lead into the positive. And make sure we don't touch the positive to the negative. So let's turn the switch on. Boy, this is this is scary. Let's see what happens. Woo! Okay, no spark. Okay, I'm gonna turn this back off. And now we can connect it. Ah! Well, it sparked anyway. That's weird, it's off. Okay, well. Probably some uh, capacitors in the distribution box. But that was a much smaller spark than if it was, than what it could have been. All right, we are connected. I do have a little piece of uh, that plastic protection stuff. I forget what it's called. Uh, just because it's, you know, basically touching this ground. All right, so positive, negative. Let's turn the battery on. Now we should have an inverter. Hey, we're good to go. All right, stage two is done. Uh, stage three is charge controllers and solar power. I'm waiting on a part for that, so hopefully tomorrow. See ya. Okie dokie, install is finished. What we have on the other side, so this is the front. On the front there's this solar on the side thing. I bought this connector on Amazon. And basically I'm just testing it with a 100 watt solar panel. Plus I have the, uh, what was it, two, 380? 380 watts on on the top okay so what from the factory it all comes in through here the stock pwm solar charge controller is if it's over this space and there's two actually there's three red and three white one of the reds and one of the whites are the positive and negative that go to the battery and the ground there's two other reds, one or one set, a red and a white that come from that connector, and then a red and a white that come from the roof. So what I did is I just spliced them onto some new wires because they weren't long enough. And um, so I'm not using the ground and the other battery, so it's just sitting loose in here. So basically they come up, this is the, the solar on the side and the big thick 10 gauge is from the roof. Goes into a DC breaker so I can turn it off if I want to do any service. Front breaker goes down. So the roof. The 370, 380, 380 watts from the roof come into the Victron 150. I originally bought 
this 120. Uh, I thought that it'd be big enough for the the 380, but it's not. The 20 amps. I thought it was 100 watts, 100 volts, 20 amps from the solar, but it's actually 100 volts input, 20 amps output. So at 13 volts or so output, it needs to be less than 20, which is around 200 watts. So I can put I can put a little over 200 watts connecting to this on the side, and then the roof can hold up to 50 amps, which is you know quite a bit, 500 something watts. Um, so anyway, so they come in to the input, output. The big one goes along these, the six gauge positive, it goes to this uh, breaker thing, into the positive bus bar, negative just goes straight to the negative bus bar. The smaller solar, solar charge controller has a 30 amp fuse to the positive bus bar, negative to the negative bus bar. So that's really basically it. Um, my install is done. Well, almost done. I still have to put the covers on the positive and negative bus bars. And I need to find a cover to put on the positive of the battery to protect it from being touched. Um, I've got a cover. Actually, there is no cover for the, for the shunt. I have to run the wiring for this. Uh, somewhere, but I just wanted to show you how much room it takes up um, Really, it's not very much there's about three inches here. I believe the battery is around eight So I have room if I ever wanted to I could put another battery in this is actually a 300 amp hour Sun fun kits battery that I put together myself. It's kind of a DIY kit. Uh, so it's 300 amp hours, quite a bit. You should be able to boondock pretty well with this setup. Um, some point, future upgrades, 300 amp hours more battery, Victron Multi Plus 3000 watt, so I can run the, well, I can run the whole coach off of a battery, including the air conditioner. But this is kind of the first step because I already had this uh, Go Power inverter that I bought several years ago. So let me back up, show completed install. It's not take up that much space. So here's my tools that I used. Um, tape measure, various tools, nut set. I ended up not using these to hold on wires. It was a whole lot easier just to use the cable mounting ties, different sizes. Uh, okay, crimpers. I bought this channel lock for the smaller wire. This is a hammer crimper, Amazon. For the bigger ones, a little flush cut for the uh, cable mounting ties, various other tools. This was vital. I use this to cut and strip the bigger wires, hammers, smaller screwdriver, bigger screwdriver, scissors. Uh, had a solar mounting kit. This was really handy to have for testing out positive and negative on the solar panels and such. Uh, heat gun, and I use this a little bit for some of the connectors to shrink when I couldn't get the heat gun in there. Anyway, didn't take a whole lot of tools. I didn't have to buy a whole lot of tools. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.